Hey guys, this is Project Dave, playing some Atelier Rise of 3, more specifically reviewing it. This is review number 3. I got this game about 9 days early, but it came out like right when the D4 beta was going on, so I had to figure out a way to beat it in a fairly short time period, but I did beat my deadline by a solid day and a half or so. And I searched desperately for a perfect image to have a preamble to, and this, this was it right here. And it also has one of the best songs in the game playing in the background. The song plays a lot. It's kind of like clarification for Bridget's Last Reward soundtrack. And it, it really sets the tone of the game. You're like wandering from place to place, running into private actions. Everybody's talking to everybody. Sometimes for like three straight hours, it's just, just people talking in Japanese, of course. Um, which is charming. And... Uh, I don't know, there's, this game is, uh, it's pretty much just pure optimism 100% of the time. And there's like not even a hint of malice in the game. There is no antagonist, essentially. Even when they could have put an antagonist in the game, they decided not to. So, that's kind of cool. The, uh, the world itself might be going to shit, but you can always come back to your trustworthy JRPGs where everything is happy times. And... You can witness the power of Rise's alchemy skills. So in contrast to other JRPGs, the power of friendship is not the crucial plot point. The power of friendship is ancillary. It's still there, kind of, but it's all about the power of Rise's ability to conjure stuff out of nothingness. That is the core plot point of the game. Uh, and essentially, Everything that drives or rises ability to alchemically uh, produce things like so is uh, crucial. Um, I will have a video on where to get word or not, if, if I remember to put it up anyway, which will let you make a base that lets you plant stuff, which is like completely worthless, but uh, you have more than enough bases made to where you can make them make one of each type. So you might as well have one that where you can plant stuff. Also, so how, pray tell, does one construct a base? That is the question. How is it done? Well, first you put down this big ass pot and then Ryza turns it like, uh, like you weird old Yankovic in the uh, Amish Paradise video. Turning lots of butter. Then everybody goes to sleep. It's still just a pot. There's no frame of construction or anything. And boom! It's done. That's how it works. That's construction right there. This is the power of alchemy. As a DN, is that his name? D I A N? Yes, got it. This is the power of alchemy. Ta da! And the other thing she does is conjure keys out of nothingness. She like goes into a focus, focus state, and then poof, here's a key. Boom. Actually, anybody can do the key thing. It's not just Ariza. Here's some lovely transition camera work. I guess this isn't even camera work. I'm pretty sure this is just how this goes. When you climb, <laughs> climb this thing. There's actually some, uh, some hidden chests in this area. FYI. So I did have this string of like three events that all lined up on top of each other. Because as you're going through the game, private action just show up on the map, a la Star Ocean. And then it's like a mine, I'm trying to beat the game somewhat quickly. And it's like a minefield where there's like 12 of them in one single area. So I have to figure out a maze to go through them. But if not, then you have to watch like a minute and a half cutscene each time, <laughs> which is fine. But, uh, Resident Evil 4 is coming out, so busy, busy. But this is another mechanic in the game. You can get a pet pony, actually multiple pet ponies, um, pretty much out of the blue. And uh, it's it's a good reflection of the game's overall optimistic atmosphere. This bouncing blue slime from Dragon Quest, except not as uh, Hershey Kiss looking. Um, 
they don't i don't i think they occasionally give good materials but mostly they give like more decorations for your hideouts uh, and you can feed them more and more stuff but they will come back with more stuff you have a, a limit in your storage of 10,000 materials and I'm like 100% positive the vast majority of people will reach that limit but I actually I got the like 6,000 materials you know 10 hours in or something and then I just progress through the rest of the game in a linear fashion and I only had like 8,500 by the end so I didn't quite get to the cap I didn't find um any increase for that capacity. There's an increase on the basket capacity, which is how much stuff you can carry around in the world before you have to go back to base to drop it off. But the 10,000 seems like it's... that's gonna happen really, really fast, so... And then from then on, you have to sit there and craft for, like, several hours until you run out of stuff. Which is fine, it gets you SP, it gets you more skills in your skill tree. So on and so on. Here's, uh, something you can do. Crucial part of the game, just just clicking X on a barrel. I assume this is an inside joke from the earlier games. I've never played the first two Rise of games, but barrels. Every party member has at least two lines of barrel. I think Ryza has three or four. And I'll have a like a cut of the final party just saying barrel over and over. Ah, we're at combat. So the combat in this game starts off very simple. Um, and then they just keep adding mechanics uh, throughout the game. There's uh, there's one mechanic added when you get to the first boss, then there's another one added when you get the key, which is shortly after the first boss, and then you, you get a mechanic at level 40 and at level 50. The one at level 40 is like six tutorial pages long. Um, it's the... The little hexagon, or pentagon, upside down pentagon, of uh, diamonds on the left side of the screen. That's the, that's the level 40 mechanic. So by the end, it's actually quite complicated. I, I beat the whole game with very crappy gear because I couldn't find how to, how to make better gear. But this wound up making it actually quite challenging and fun even on uh, easy difficulty. I, I played the most of the game on normal, and then at, at some point I realized either I'm gonna have to brute force and figure out how to how to craft higher level materials, which it could have been anything. I could have had to go do a side quest or something. And there's 60, 70 side quests on the map at this point. So I decided to just bump it down to easy, which didn't really help that much. It's still extremely difficult. <laughs> With uh, with bad gear, if you watch any of the boss kills, you'll you'll notice that for the later ones, they're like 30 minutes long. Uh, the bosses have attacks that one shot your entire party. This is uneasy, and uh, you pretty much have to sit there and keep pamming items to try to stay alive. Items in this game are permanent. They're called consumables, but they're not actually consumable in the traditional sense. Um, you just make them, you craft them, and they have various attributes based on how you craft them. And a big part of the game is figuring out how to use and balance those items, and making sure you have an item that is good against the boss's weakness, and stuff like that. Unless the boss doesn't happen to have a weakness, like the final boss, then you just uh, hope for the best, I suppose. Interesting boss, by the way. For this fight, I felt like it did a good job of demonstrating all the mechanics of the game, the um, or the core mechanics of the combat, so the item usage, the transitioning between characters on the fly, and the support attacks. To deal physical damage, I just do something that deals physical damage naturally, and then it will automatically trigger like this. Your Virgil attack string from from your uh, four foot tall anime waifu lady. And oh, the the cascading enemies here. This is specific to random quests in the world, which can trigger, and they give you 
Some of the, sometimes they give you permanent stat rewards, like HP or attack or what have you. So you can kind of grind infinitely, even without the alchemy aspect, but making better equipment is definitely the best way to improve your characters. Um, if you wind up not using the higher tier equipment, then you're definitely going to need better items instead, so your alchemy will still dictate your success in a different way. The team level in the bottom right is sort of tied into that mechanic. Also, certain other aspects aspects of the combo, which are not especially clear, but they exist. Uh, well, the key, the key, I understand. So, if it's at team level two, then you can use a key. You can turn an enemy into a key, or you can use a key as a buff, which I only did on extremely hard fights, but. But you can basically stockpile really powerful keys from bosses for the entire game so that you have a better chance against the final boss, essentially. Um, the keys from regular enemies tend to just have like one or two attributes, so they're not totally nuts. Uh, said keys can also be equipped to your character and just function as an extra accessory slot, essentially. And also can change the role of the character, which can affect like how well they use items or um, how much damage they do or how much AP or CC they gain over time, how quickly. So this is slightly later, later on, we get a, a different one Bows and the level up screens. Right? And these skills that they're learning are the ultimate skills, I believe. Well, it might be two different skills, but the Fatal Drive. So, Fatal Drives actually don't do that much damage, or they're based on your physical attack compared to items, so... They're not particularly good for damage, but they're nice and shiny looking. And at level 50, you get, suddenly get a tutorial that says, Hey, here's how this works. So this is going to do like 200 damage or something. Maybe a little bit more because it's uh, Lila. She actually does respectable physical damage, but... Uh, so far it's done 20, so we'll see. But you can see, this is on easy, but I'm 20 levels below the, the opponent, essentially. Here's the photo mode of the game, it's outstanding. Um, there are 11 different party members in this game, so for each scene, somehow they got to figure out a way to get 11 different people to talk. And also, when you're roaming around the world, there's potentially, uh, well... I guess not counting Ryzo, there's 10 different characters that could be showing up at any given point to interrupt your journey with more uh, anime JRPG silliness, like so. Um, you can see there's two on the map right here. That's a pretty good demonstration, but I think at most I've had like six in like a little tiny square radius of a pool or so. Here's uh, Patricia's sad pose, which you can use in the photo mode. But in general, this game is a relentless spring of optimism. Very nostalgic uh, feeling for me because I haven't played that many JRPGs of late, but apparently there's still good ones rolling around. And at least the way I approached it, the game wound up being very challenging in a, in a fun way. Um, and I don't get to exercise my JRPG muscles very often, just due to not playing them very often anymore. But in the, the PS1, PS2 era, I must have played like 60 different JRPGs, such as Vagrant Story or Xenosaga or uh, Final Fantasy Tactics, Chrono Trigger, Chrono Cross, etc. And hopefully Final Fantasy 16 this year, most likely. But this was an extremely fun game. Uh, the other two games I've reviewed, which are Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires, also a Koei game, and Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning, I gave both an 8 out of 10, but this game is a 9 out of 10. So, you thought I would give an 8 to literally every game. Not so. One of them gets a 9. Uh, I don't know when the next game I'll review is, I'm guessing it'll probably be from the same uh, PR firm where I got this game. I probably would have done a wall long review had I gotten a, a code for that, but I did not. So here we are with a subsequent Koa game, which is probably a better game than wall long overall. I do like wall long as well. So here's uh, 
rises on a mount swimming <laughs> and everybody else is floating in the water uh, a, ma a majestic um, I had the word well I've, I have a bunch of these panorama that's the one <laughs> so I have a bunch of these that will compile into one video of uh, random panoramas of people doing photo mod poses we got Lila with a wolverine claws in front of the mount. The mount prevents you from getting in combat. That's the main functional usage of it. But thanks for watching the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time.